little things. Huh? Yeah. Well, good afternoon and welcome to our noon devotion. We are glad you are with us this day. A couple of announcements as we begin. We celebrate the birth of Evie Mae Hoy to Ryan and Lisa Chili Hoy. Evie Mae is the granddaughter of Kathy Fegley. Um, prayers abounding for mom and daughter and a hopeful discharge on Wednesday. So we hold that family and give thanks to God for the gift of new life, um, especially now. Uh, Nancy Kearns is having eye surgery on Wednesday, so we hold her in our prayers. And we continue to pray for the family and friends of Nancy Ludwig and Phyllis Muir. We pray for Harold Steef, Burl Ruth, Kathleen Hull, Joyce Sutliff, Steve Sablone, and Gail and Paul McKim. Other things that are happening this week that haven't happened before, um, we are having a Facebook Live hymn sing this Saturday at 7 p.m. So just a reminder, I've gotten a few already. If you have a request of a hymn you'd like to hear and sing along to, please email, email me or Pastor Bill um, by tomorrow so we can have all those hymns set for Saturday. Um, if you don't have a request, you are more than welcome just to join us and, and sing along on Saturday. We look forward to, to singing together. Well, today's devotion will be a little different than ones I've done before. It will be a time of prayer for all of us. I woke up with a heavy heart this morning, feeling the weight of the pandemic, the racial divide in our country, and the worries of my own family and friends. I sent out a ton of text messages this morning, inviting people to share where they were this day and to share the prayers on their hearts right now. The response was and continues to be overwhelming. And I think it just shows that right now all of our hearts are aching. And we need to acknowledge that we are hurting and we are struggling and we are grieving right now. This is real. These feelings and emotions are real. And before healing can happen, we must acknowledge the hurt and the pain where we find ourselves in it and move towards healing and wholeness together. What I will share with you this day are the prayers of family and friends and Trinity folks. And when I realized how many were coming in, I had to stop typing them at 10 a.m. because otherwise this devotion would have gone well into the full lunch hour. So if you sent them to me after that, know that I saw them and I will type them up and add them as comments to this devotion. Your prayers are heard. Let us pray. May God bless each of us with holy anger at injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of people, especially towards black image bearers, so that we may tire, tirelessly work for justice, freedom, and peace for those on the margins who Jesus would be hanging out with today. We pray for mutual respect, caring, and compassion. I would like to pray for more acceptance and understanding and less hate in the world so that everyone realizes that we are all human and should be equals no matter what. We pray for successful surgeries and that the coronavirus leaves soon and those who are ill recover quickly. We pray for peace and understanding. We pray that we find peace and understanding in our restless world for leaders to stand up for what is right. I will be praying for all of the minorities who feel like they don't matter in the US and for peace for the Floyd family. My prayer is that God will guide my words and actions so that even in my little corner of the world here in Rabazonia, I can be a voice for peace and understanding and not appear to be silently indifferent. I am praying for people to have the strength to look at themselves and reach into their souls and find who they need to be to make this God-given world the kinder, safer, and more loving place that this earth was intended for. I am also praying for my grieving dad. I pray, I worry about climate change and the world we are leaving for the next generation. Worries for my family, friends, etc. You know, the usual. Peace in our country. I pray we, would, we return out of hibernation and rejoice in his name. I pray for common sense to return to our world. I would pray for healing for all communities, that they listen, really listen to each other. I am praying for God to show me ways I can stand with my brothers and sisters of color and to show them they are loved inherently. I pray for ways to speak to my white brothers and sisters who can't understand how lifelong experiences with subtle acts of racism have led to our brothers and sisters of color to this point. I pray for our leaders to engage in dialogue, 
to de-escalate situations they find themselves in, to be humble servants and listen, to hear what the other person is saying rather than to respond. I pray for there to be a way for the world to take a deep cleansing breath, to know we are all God's children and we are all his image. Selfishly, for the safety of my nephew, as he each day gears up in his SWAT gear to walk the streets of Charlotte with his fellow police officers. Then I humbly plead for the safety of all who go to the streets, police, National Guards, demonstrators, and yes, Lord, even the looters. You have told me that when my people humbly pray, I will hear their land, heal their land, please, Lord. I pray for peace, love, and healing to safely end isolation and all things that divide us. I pray that this time we learn to cope with prayer, hope, and friendships, not harming cope, coping skills like addiction. I pray for the young children, mine included, who have to learn of the term racism. I pray that all the six people get better, and I pray for the nurses who are working overtime. Prayers for understanding and peace. I don't even know what else to pray for. Just so much uncertainty in this world, so much hate, it terrifies me. I pray that the passion and hurt everyone is feeling this week over a man's life that was taken from him, and the memories of this country's history is never lost, and whatever unity has come from this never fades. I pray both black and white hearts are permanently changed. We pray for doctors, nurses, people in transitions or new situations, our church, the people in it, the people who have been wronged, and for those who help make it right. I pray that God protects all of his children and return the children of God to practice the golden rule. I pray for mothers who live in fear that their children will be treated differently, hurt or even killed because of the color of their skin. I pray for the police officers who believe in equality and who do what's right during a time when more attention is drawn to their brothers in blue who don't believe the same. I pray for our black and brown skinned friends that they know they are loved and valued in our communities and in our world. And as always, I pray that there is a kidney out there for my mom. Pray for injustice in all places where people gather to call out racism and injustice. I pray for our leaders that they will find compassion, understanding, and wisdom to do the right thing. Pray for courage for me, us, as white people of privilege to do more than talk. Praying for hope for better days. I have been praying for peace and understanding and for love to conquer ignorance and hate. I am praying today that tolerance, understanding, compassion, and enlightenment are brought alive in every person and praying that a way can be found that such hatred, prejudice, and division can truly be addressed and expelled from our world so that the phrases, all people are created equal, and with liberty and justice for all, and love our neighbors as ourselves, are truly and constantly lived out each day by all of us. I would pray for calm, and that those leading on all fronts are open to the guiding presence of the Holy Spirit, and I mostly pray that change is coming. Prayers for understanding that violence is not the answer or solution to violent acts, also prayers for all the people to find peace in the knowledge that this too shall pass and that there are always greater things ahead. I pray for the voices of our youth to be heard, the youth who don't see color. I pray for compassion for all who are hurting. I pray for an end to violence of all kinds. I pray for enlightenment for all those of us who hold implicit bias. I pray for health as we are still in the midst of a pandemic. I pray for all those who are trying to have their voices heard. O oh Lord, that people will be heard, that vandalism will cease, that love will triumph after all. I pray for a brighter future. I pray for listening ears, open hearts, kindness, compassion, and empathy, leaders who can bring us together and not divide us by fear, the opportunity for all of us to admit past mistakes and work toward a better future for all of us together, putting an end to all that divides us. I will pray for small business owners that can't run their businesses due to COVID and the businesses that are getting destroyed in riots today. I'm keeping in my thoughts the fighting, the rioting, and all the chaos going on in our world right now. I don't like how it is one side against the other, and I want there to be peace between everyone. Dear Heavenly Father, today I pray for peace, 
I pray for an end to unnecessary violence and beginning to necessary kindness. God, I pray for continued good health for the community. I pray that this worldwide pandemic will leave as quickly as it arrived. God, continue to shine your light through this time of darkness. Continue to show us we are not alone. Thank you for all you have done for us. Praying that we can heal from this virus and from unrest in the country. Praying for real equality. Praying for strength, for justice, for an awareness and an end to racism and the structural impacts it has had on our country and our people. Today, I'm praying for peace, in all capital letters. Peace for everyone and peace shown by everyone. Peace solves problems and makes changes. I pray that the feelings of anger, fear, injustice, pain, and despair turn into actions for the love of all people, and those actions turn into teachings for all future generations. My prayer would be for clergy. It must feel like the weight of the world, or at least the weight of the congregation, is on your shoulders. I pray for peace, for our leaders to commit to making selfless and rational decisions guided by compassion and understanding, and a desire to unify rather than divide, and also for wisdom in having to make difficult medical decisions and faith that God will guide us and walk us where we need to be. I pray for a nation that heals and starts to understand that we are all God's people, that we need to all work together to build each other up, not tear each other down, I pray that the terror that exists across our country stops without any more violence. I pray that the riots do not spread to even more communities. I pray for our safety. I pray for this country right now. I pray that all the hate, violence, and destruction going on can be replaced by God's love. I pray that someday we will all be able to love one another and accept one another, regardless of our appearance. I pray for those who have lost family members to the virus. I pray for any of my friends who are hurting right now, and I pray for all of my family to stay happy and safe. I praise God that soon we will be able to go outside a little more. I hope that we continue to stay healthy and safe. I pray for calm in our thoughts, calm in our response, and calm in our instruction and support of all in need. I pray for healing through love and understanding. Almighty God, you know the pain, heartache, confusion, and overwhelm, um, overwhelming that is happening in our land. We pray for an end to violence as people build bridges, not walls. We pray for healing for those who are ill, even as we pray for those who serve them in their families, neighborhoods, hospitals, and medical labs. We pray for people unemployed and underemployed, that they may see their value and worth, and that new beginnings would come to them. We pray for those who mourn that you would walk with them. We pray for our churches busy at work and ministry to help usher healing into this world. And we pray for ourselves, that we may be patient yet bold, forgiving yet outraged, and grateful though challenged, tired and afraid. You are our shepherd and Lord. Let us find and grow green pastures. Let us find and share abundance of food and drink. Make our waters still enough that we can see the bottom of the river, yet rushing enough to believe in better futures. And as ever, we pray for those things for which we neglect to ask, yet, know, yet you know we need them. And in humility and grace, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Thank you all for your responses this day, for your prayers. If you have more prayers that you would like to add in the comments, please do. And now go from this place wrapped in God's grace and God's love and God's forgiveness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.